Hello, all of you wonderful people, and welcome to Daily Deco. It is what uh, Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday. Um, my day's day. More... Happy hump my day. Days. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, my uh, my other half, she's a nurse, so of course she's been used to uh, sort of shift work, and um, now she's shifted to community outreach. So she just does does uh, sort of Monday to Friday, and she's like. I never really understood hump day until now. I was like, yeah, it's, it's the middle of the week. Uh, it's the kind of the high end and everything from here is just sort of downhill. Well, it's not really downhill. It's more the opposite of a hump. It's, it's, it's it? rolling it's like to the everything's... weekend. Exactly. <laughs> um, What's new? Oh, um, it's it's worth heading over to the website and, um, and subscribing to simplyscuba.com. Um, subscribing to our email mailing because you might get something special in your inbox tomorrow um i don't know maybe maybe have they decided I, when the email is going live i think so i think they have they're just sort of making sure it's, it's just right um and then it's going to be uh, sort of sent out so um yeah, definitely. If you're not a, uh, a subscriber, then uh, yeah, we do all sorts of new ins so that you know sort of what's uh, sort of new and exciting. But we also uh, do some discount codes uh, so that every now and then. So if you're on the market for some new scuba diving equipment, uh, it's definitely worth having us in your inbox. Uh, so yeah, head over to us at simplyscuba.com and uh, and sign up for an account and uh, and yeah. We, we don't really pester you with emails. We'll send you the odd one. It's normally about once a week and that tends to be about it. You'll probably get um, a few when we're first starting because we have to do all the, the legal like GDPR boring stuff. But um, but going forwards, yeah, it's about sort of once a week. Normally on a Saturday, uh, you'll get an email and it will just be, oh, have you seen this? Um, and occasionally you'll get, oh, have you seen this discount code? Um, yeah, so it's definitely worth uh, subscribing to us. Um, jumping into the news, unless you've got anything to say, Sean? No, 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 that's, you, you summed it up. Uh, what about the product? What products are you <clears> going to be talking about? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a Ziegel mask. Um, so Ziegel is a relatively unknown brand here in the UK. Uh, they're American, um, so they're fairly big over there. I'm sure a lot of our American audience will uh, sort of recognise the uh, the Ziegel. Uh, but here in the UK, they're still fairly. Um, they're one of the brands, but they're they're, they're sort of little known um, until now because uh, sort of here at Simply Scuba, we're sort of backing them and we're stocking a few of their bits and bobs. So. So um, yeah, today's episode I'm going to be talking about the Ziegel Scope Mask, which is definitely worth checking out. Um, the first time I saw it, you know when you see a uh, sort of a groundbreaking sort of piece of equipment, you're like, oh okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, now that we're stocking it, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, sort of start talking about it. Anyway, cool. um, so onto the news. So the first news story comes from New Zealand, and this was a, uh, a scuba diver, <clears throat> and uh, and he started diving. I think it was about ten years ago or something. And um, wow, and he's still and going. He, like, really, That's amazing. He hasn't <laughs> stopped. <laughs> he um, he really caught the bug, and he's uh, he's been sort of diving ever since. And um, obviously, he's had a few surface injuries in the middle. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so. So last, uh, when was it? It was a couple of days ago. He, um, it was on Monday, <clears throat> or last Monday, this article says. So he was diving, it was like mid-afternoon, about three o'clock in the afternoon. He, um, he goes out to, uh, to one of his uh, sort of favorite diving haunts and, um, and he anchored a, a diver down float and, uh, and he descended down to sort of eight meters and I believe he was diving by himself. Um, but uh, he was on side mount and whatnot. He had all sorts of redundancies. He'd done it plenty of times. He knows what he's doing. And, uh, and he went for this dive. He told his uh, his family and all that kind of stuff, uh, sort of where he was and uh, and where to um, or when when he was going to come back. And uh, and yeah, he went for a dive. He's cruising around, just kind of like doing his thing, just checking out the fish and the octopus and all that kind of stuff. And then um, a, a fair way sort of into his dive, all of a sudden something just grabs onto his calf. He freaks out because why wouldn't you um, <laughs> yeah. but he said um, he was uh, he was interviewed and he said uh, like the night before he just watched this like scary movie so he legit thought this is it this is how I'm gonna die something horrible has just grabbed hold of me um, that no one has ever seen in the world and uh, it, it's just gonna kill me this, this is it I'm dead um, <laughs> oh my he, God. Turned, he 
He turns around and it's another scuba diver. Um, but more than that, it's actually a search and rescue scuba diver. Because what had happened was earlier, so he put his float up and, uh, and he'd gone for a dive, but then later a kayaker had like come across his float kind of, he recognized that it was a diver down flag. He looked around, couldn't see any bubbles and just kind of freaked out. So called emergency services and said, I think there's a missing diver. There's a diver down flag. I can't see any evidence of scuba divers in the water. I can't see any bubbles. Um, and they were like, okay, we're gonna get on this. They got the uh, the emergency services search and rescue. Uh, so they got in the water and yeah, they found him, which is amazing. <laughs> but um, yeah, he it kind of freaked him out. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's it is an it, it is a good story, and it does um, uh, uh, sort of raise confidence in that. Yeah, if you are sort of lost, that um, their response time is pretty darn quick. He yeah. was under the water all this time and uh, and they managed to find him. Uh, I imagine what they did is they sort of got to the area and they found this uh, sort of trail of bubbles and they just followed the trail of bubbles. That's what I used to do um, to find people. And um, yeah, but <laughs> in, all, in all our years of doing like, like daily scuba news and talking about news articles and stuff in the various versions of the show, mm. We've never had that sort of story before, have we? I mean, it's probably happened a lot, but it's never actually been um, like publicised. I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it, it's much different scale. I had it where I was, I was teaching a rescue diver course, and um, so they're all qualified students, they're all qualified divers, and uh, and we were diving uh, in the UK. And, uh, and the visibility was quite bad, but that's almost quite good for a, a rescue diver course because it, it really does mm. um, search and rescue quite easy if you can literally see them from 50 meters away. Uh, whereas if it's like five meters vis, you actually have to do a proper search. But um, we were doing, uh, we were doing, we were practicing, it must've been unresponsive underwater. And, uh, and where we were, we had these wooden platforms there was one down at about seven meters, which was perfect. So, uh, so everyone got kitted up and was like, okay, right, the uh, the platform's down here. All you have to do is just follow a um, a rope from a buoy straight down to it. So it's like, I'll will see you all down there. And I get down there and um, and I found uh, sort of most of them, but there's one diver missing. So I'm like, oh, truth. So we start a legitimate uh, sort of search for divers and. Um, and yeah, the way I found him was surfacing, looking on the surface for bubbles, following that bubble trail down. And yeah, he was just cruising around, just swimming in mid water at about five meters all by himself. Um, so uh, yeah, sort of grabbed hold of him. It's like, hey, let's, let's regroup. And um, yeah, he was, he was all sort of happy in his blissful ignorance, but um, yeah, no, if, if you are diving by yourself and you can't see your buddy or any of your diver group, don't just swim around by yourself. Just, yeah, look around for a little bit uh, and then surface so that you can regroup. But um, but yeah, this guy, actually, he hadn't been diving for uh, for, 10, uh, for 10 years. I'm thinking of uh, one of the other stories. Uh, he's actually been diving for two years, um, which is still a fair amount of time if he's been doing it a, um, a lot. Yeah. Um, and yeah. He, he says, uh, I love that it's a completely different world compared to what we see on the land. Uh, there's just so much to see from schools of fish, octopus, crayfish, and the occasional sea lion. Um, so yeah, he was just doing his thing, going for a dive, all of a sudden, uh, someone just grabs his leg. Um, he has a heart attack. <laughs> and um, yeah, but everyone comes back safely. It's, it's one of those like nice, reassuring stories that, yeah, if you are sort of missing, then yeah, people do. Yeah end up doing the right things and uh, and search and rescue will inevitably find you yeah um, yeah it's, it's just a, <clears throat> a fun fun story um what? yeah yeah next next news story uh this one comes from florida and this is two uh two divers from the aqua nuts um blair morrow and ryan piku um and the story says uh, they're both mates with Aquanuts scuba diving charters. I don't know whether that's just the casual uh, sort of writing of scuba diving.com or whether they're legitimate like boat mates um, 
or, or if that's some kind of title with the Aquanaut scuba diving charters. But anyway, they um, and we half think that Sean's already mentioned this story, but he can't remember. No, no, it's not that I can't remember. We have mentioned it, but the article, I think it was around Christmas time or like one of the first daily decos, like a previous couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, but um, basically, the article was just like they found a mammoth's tusk, um, uh, and it was all linked to the because uh, they have a YouTube channel, which is I, yeah, I hunt dead things, which again I remember linking specifically on there. Um, okay. Yeah, but basically the article kind of half, it was just like, they found something, they might have brought it up, we don't know. And it's it's one of those things oh, where, I gotcha. yeah, the, the article was just a bit, not necessarily all over the place, but yeah, it didn't answer questions that well. Whereas in this article, yeah, stay, is, stay yeah, tuned. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this article's, it's, it's actually, it's got words in it, which is good. And it, it explains <laughs> um, stuff a bit better. So, uh, so yeah, so these two, they've been uh, sort of diving for a long time and yeah, they've created this uh, sort of fossil hunting YouTube channel. So they're, they're sort of out uh, sort of searching for stuff and they have lifted these two um, tusks. One of them was, um, obviously they're fairly old, so they're pretty fragile. Uh, one of them was already fractured in the middle. Um, so they kind of lifted that one as is, kind of gently. Mm. Uh, the other one they wanted to, uh, that was a bit more intact, but still fragile. So they thought, oh, we'll be a little bit uh, sort of more careful. So they used a, uh, a tarpaulin to, uh, to create this kind of very soft cradle. They wrapped it in, uh, in zip ties, cable ties, to, uh, to sort of hold it together as best they can. And then when they uh, sort of gently, gently lifted it up, they then put it in a, a fresh water bath to uh, sort of desalinate it. And, uh, and then I think somewhere they sort of filled it with like epoxy and all that kind of stuff to, uh, to really kind of keep it um, sort of maintained and um, stop it from falling apart, basically. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's it is cool, and it doesn't really say what they're gonna do with it. I think it's just gonna be in their like backyard or something. Um, well, it doesn't article, specifically say. Oh, what does it say? Oh, it say? So the article that I wrote said that there's basically again it was they they weren't too sure about it, but remember of tusks. They go for around, depending on the condition, they go from like, I don't know, a couple of grand to a couple of hundred grand at auction, depending on uh, the, uh, yeah, so they might, they might be selling it on. Yeah, yeah. Um, says, uh, the tusks are the coolest things I've found so far, Piku said. Um, I've also found a mammoth tooth uh, in the jaw uh, about a month ago and a 5.7 inch megalodon tooth a couple of days ago. Um, so yeah, Florida seems to be the place to go if you um, if you want some um, just, yeah, yeah. rare, why well, I say rare, uh, sort of obscure underwater fossils. And um, yeah, you can probably make some money out of it. Yeah, do you know Another how they- way to, um, um, Sorry, this is weird because yeah. the connection's a bit off, isn't it? Uh, it's my fault, my broadband's rubbish. Um, but the way that they try to track these things, from what I can remember, is yeah. they actually look at weather patterns and see if there's a surge of okay. weather. And then when they do that, then they go to the site because obviously it, it churns things up. So they actually yeah. look at weather I patterns learned... to see if they can pick things up. You know why I learned that? I learned that from Tomb Raider 2, the cradle of life or whatever Filth, it was. the cradle That's of filth. That's... Cradle of Phil. No, that's a band. That is a band. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there was a cable tie. The, the, we're, we're desperately trying to get this cable tie segue in um, because Sean and I were talking about this earlier. And uh, because they use all those uh, sort of cable ties to uh, to sort of maintain it, I saw a post the other day, and um, some fashion brand online is trying to sell cable tie jewelry for like. Six hundred dollars um, for like a bracelet that just looks like a cable tie, and uh, and like five hundred dollars or something for a uh, a ring that just looks like a cable tie, and um, it's just as scuba divers, yeah, we we have hundreds of cable ties. I've got a whole box full of them somewhere in that. Um, but uh, so yeah, you're, you're a millionaire, basically. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think some of them are, are like metal. They are actually sort of brass, but they've like PVD coated them black. So it just looks like you're wearing a black cable tie. Um, and <laughs> you've just spent like five, $600 to uh, 
make you look kind of cheap. Um, it's bizarre. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. bizarre. That's anyway, what they used for the mammoth. The... When they brought the mammoth tusk up, they were like, no, yeah. we've got to treat it with respect. So that, that's oh, yeah. why there's yeah. that, you, if you click on the link to the article or, or to the, the, the product, it's no longer there. It's because these guys yeah. bought them all for this tusk. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they, they bankrupted themselves in the process <laughs> trying to get so many of these uh, these bracelets. But, uh, oh, it's truth. It just beggars belief. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, today's product is the uh, is the Ziegel Scope mask. So Ziegel Scope is, um, is a single lens mask. So big, big sort of... Um, uh, sort of single lens and um, and it's frameless in design which means that the lens is brought that much closer to your eyes which actually increases your field of vision but whilst it's reducing the internal volume of the mask it means it's that much quicker to uh, to actually clear it so if you've got water in your mask you don't need as much lung volume to actually push it out also makes uh, sort of equalizing it uh, sort of that much easier as you're swimming down but one of the coolest features about it is in the standard mask strap that comes with it. Instead of just a traditional uh, like silicone strap with the ratchet system, it's got more of a, uh, a snowboarding like elastic fabric strap, and it's got uh, sort of silicone detailing on it that gives it a bit of grip. Um, and I tried one of these, um, gosh, truth, a few years ago, and um, very very comfortable. It still holds on. Um, because that was the first thing that I thought if it's just like a uh, uh, an elastic webbing material kind of strap it's just going to be like moving around surely but because they've got that silicone detailing on it it actually grips onto uh, the back of your head or the back of your hood so your mask strap doesn't move around and what makes it sort of really nice is that you don't need uh, sort of clicky or clunky ratchet mechanisms to adjust the strap you just have um, uh, one sort of buckle that you just kind of extend it or sort of tighten it and uh, and once it's set up it's set up and it's also pretty tough so with silicone straps one main problem with them is that if you get a tiny little nick um, sort of on one edge of it <clears throat> if it's uh, sort of right on the edge then it's likely to tear if you put too much like effort on it it's very easy just to rip straight through that when it's got that um, sort of imperfection in it. Whereas with these ones, if you cut through sort of half of it, it will still sort of hold on strong because it's it's like it's well webbing material, so it's inherently strong. So you have to go through a lot to actually uh, sort of cut through it. And uh, and it comes in a pretty nice box as well. I know that's not overly exciting, uh, but instead of one of those like really boring, like hard plastic boxes, uh, it comes in one that's a bit more uh, sort of molded and shaped to the uh, to the actual mask. So it fits in your bag that much easier. So definitely check it out. There's gonna be a link down in the description below. Um, yeah, the Ziegel Scope Mono Diving Mask. Um, yeah, I like it. It's, it's cool. worth checking out. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you say yeah, like you the can get stuff. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's been tried and tested in the mountaineering world for hundreds of years. So it works perfectly mm. above water. So yeah, going underwater, it, yeah, it, it would work fine. Yeah. Uh, another thing is, is it has a, a pretty big nose pocket. Um, so if you do have a larger nose, or you do find that uh, sort of most masks tend to uh, sort of brush up uh, against your nose and irritate you, then yeah, definitely check out the Ziegel scope. Um, yeah. yeah, it's cool. I man. like it. It's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. Uh, next news story um, comes from the EU, and um, and this <clears throat> is uh, there's quite a lot of legalese uh, in this uh, in this news story, but it's basically the EU are basically dragging their heels when it comes to uh, sort of protecting seas and um, and the kind of they they basically signed up to all sorts of. Um, uh, like sort of promises that all oh, by by this date we'll uh, sort of reduce like super trawlers and by this date uh, we'll sort of reduce um, sort of overfishing and all this kind of stuff and funnily enough uh, the politicians just have lied um, and they just sort of keep pivoting and they they haven't really done anything but NGOs are um, are getting to the point where they're just like drafting letters and they are demanding that um, they, they basically 
do something. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so a, a coalition of NGOs, they're calling for an urgent ban on destructive bottom trawling in EU marine protected areas after the failure of member states to defend the seas. So, um, so this is uh, sort of members from Oceana, Greenpeace, and Client Earth. They're um, they're sort of drafting up this letter to uh, or a report, sorry, on the uh, the EU's biodiversity strategy for uh, for 2030. Uh, the draft report, which will be presented to the Environment Committee on Thursday, expresses strong regret that the EU has neither fully met the 2020 biodiversity strategy's uh, objectives nor the global H E uh, biodiversity targets. So they need to get off their butts and do stuff, basically. Yeah. Um, and um, and they say that. So one of the um, one of the sort of things is that there, there's an aim for 2030. 30 percent of European waters are going to be um, uh, sort of protected ocean sanctuaries. Um, at the moment, they um, they're basically saying that fewer than one percent of European marine protected areas are fully off limits to fishing. So it's just bonkers. And bear in mind that's one percent of the protected areas. Um, so it's just ridiculous. Whereas there's supposed to be um, this. It's like the Paris agreements and all that kind of stuff. They're supposed to be, oh, okay, so we're gonna, we've got all this time to sort of change things and make it better so that when we sort of reach uh, 2030, we're at this sort of perfect uh, sort of point where they're actually reversing uh, overfishing and, uh, and all that. But at this sort of current time, they're nowhere near that. And it's like with so many things with politicians, it's always gonna be at the, the the night before they're like oh yeah you know what we should really do something about this whereas yeah. the whole point of having years and years and literally decades to sort of plan and gradually get this change they're they're not really doing anything and uh, it's kind of brexit because brexit we had what four years mm -hmm. to come up with a deal and then like the best deal that we had was on like christmas eve uh, wasn't it when they sort of released it? I and think it was. Like, I don't even yeah. think it was that. Like there was between Christmas Eve and the actual day, because there were talks about um, them extending it for like a couple of weeks into the new year to kind of get get everything like Ugh. for the ink to dry. So I, I, I swear it didn't get signed off officially until like about a day before to Ugh. like New Year. It's bonkers. That, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. For four years, and granted, I know they were doing stuff. They, they, trust me, it was always in the news that uh, that people were doing stuff, and people were rejecting this, that, and the other. Yeah. But it's it's a bit of a coincidence that it all came down to like the week before uh, the final final deadline yeah. um, that anything actually got done. And there's there's no way that we can uh, sort of do this unless uh, for the uh, sort of fishing. Um, sort of prospects to, um, to yeah so we need to start doing gradual changes now to get everybody used to it because it's going to be even worse if we leave it up until yeah December 2029 and all of a sudden they're like oh yeah you know what we should kind of do something about this and drop sudden changes um, that's going to uproot anything exactly. but what would make it even harder is if there are no fish there anyway because they've overfished everything mm -hmm. so um yeah we we really do need to um sort of sort of press the uh, the eu to start doing some kind of um changes um because yeah finally politicians are coming across people that are actually kind of um passionate about these kind of things yeah. and they can't really pivot like they're used to so um yeah we just need to uh, sort of keep on them to actually get them to um, to actually do something yeah um and the um the uh, the final news story uh comes from germany um and um and they have found a a very rare uh, fossil from a shark uh, called Asteracanthus and uh, and he or she I can't confirm its gender from what I can see in this article um, so they were found in Bavaria in Germany which apparently 150 uh, million years ago was apparently subtropical um, Lovely. And, um, and in that area is a very very unique 
type of um, of limestone. Uh, it's called Solnhofen, um, and and this has a very uh, sort of particular like composition, and it's amazing at. Uh, basically preserving fossils. So they found a, a very rare, oh, what was it, Australopithecus or something? Uh, I can't remember. The the, the birdie um, sort of fossil, you'll probably have seen it. <laughs> the and, birdie um, fossil. <laughs> The, the birdie one, you know, you'll you'll recognize it. It's like a bird and he's kind of all stretched out and you can kind of see its feathers. And now that's kind of why everyone thinks, oh, maybe T-Rex had feathers. Yeah. Um, so, um, so anyway, back to the shark one. So, as we know, <laughs> the, because sharks are cartilaginous, they don't have bones, they have cartilage, uh, which makes them very bendy and flexy, uh, but it also means that um, they don't really, their entire skeletons, they don't last very long, they don't preserve very well. Um, I mean, you never really see skeletons with ears or noses because the cartilage just disappears. Uh, it's only the bones that, uh, that remain. And with sharks, the only thing that tends to um, sort of fossilize are the teeth. So um, to be able to find a uh, an actual skeleton of one of these sharks is very, very rare. So they're very excited because they can um, sort of measure and study it to a greater deal than just, oh, we found a bunch of teeth. Okay, we can kind of extrapolate uh, a bit about the animal, but not that much. So what they can learn about this, uh, these remains is that the shark was about eight foot long um, and uh, it would have uh, sort of roamed the earth's oceans around 150 million years ago and um, and they're kind of they're looking at the teeth and they're saying the way that they're um, uh, the way they're designed it could kind of prey upon quite a lot of stuff um, they've got sort of pointy bits but they've also got sort of raspy stuff so it would have been quite a predator sort of back in its uh, back in its days uh, and it also had two dorsal spines sort of bony spines uh, on its two dorsal fins on its back so um, they're pretty gnarly they look pretty sharp from from the fossil remains uh, those are most likely defensive um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of serrated on one side, which is kind of cool. Mm. And um, yeah, they, yeah, they say uh, it's it's amazing to be able to uh, sort of study these because um, because of their um, sort of long life uh, tooth replacement system. They, they have like teeth on conveyor belts, most sharks. So they keep creating teeth. Mm. Um, that's what you tend to find you tend to find all these kind of teeth and this one had rows and rows of uh, of teeth but um it's nice to find them like all in one space so that they can actually say oh right it's not just a loose tooth this is all from the same animal wow. this is the um it had this type of tooth it also had this tull of uh, of teeth and um yeah it's just sort of an interesting find and um yeah something that they can properly uh sort of study yeah it's good I bet you mm -hmm. within 10 years there'll be a dive mm. knife that is dedicated to this shark. If that those dorsal fins Called are like the, that, there'll be some sort of Asteracanthus. Something like that, or the Astro <laughs> knife. It'll be doesn't doesn't really roll off the tongue. It, <clears throat> and all, or they'll copy the design of it. They'll look at it and they'll try and get it like the, the design of the knife to be like that dorsal fin. Yeah, it's a bit more stabby than we uh, than we need for scuba ah, diving. Just but, put a bit uh, of cork on the top, and you'll be all right. <laughs> just make it blunt too. Yeah, <clears throat> you'll be all right. Hey. So, um, so they say the dental record of the skeleton is exceptionally well preserved. They it found, contains more than a hundred and fifty teeth. That's amazing. They found the shark's dentist. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. All his dental records, as, <laughs> as they were told, like your school records, they stay with you. Uh, they <laughs> never disappear. Um, and apparently each of them had a well-developed central cusp that is accompanied on both sides by several smaller cuspslets uh, the team found. So they're kind of similar to, uh, to certain shark teeth at the moment, where they have like a central um, sort of spike pointy bit and then they have uh, sort of serrated bits either side for uh, for sawing through stuff um, but yeah this guy had rows and rows of them so they think that yeah he was, he was a pretty active uh, predator sort of feeding on a wide range of prey animals nice um, yeah 
So um, one of the um, one of the researchers, uh, Sebastian Stumpf, um, said Asteracanthus uh, Astor was certainly not only one of the largest cartilaginous fishes of its time, but it was also one of the most impressive. Uh, there's an artist impression which has given him like tiger stripes. Um, they can't really confirm whether he was stripy or whether he had feathers or I don't know. Um, but um, they're like, yeah, this this guy, he was back in the day, he was pretty cool. Uh, and it is, it's cool for them to, uh, to find such a well-preserved remains. So I'm sure they're gonna be digging around, see if there are any of these uh, sort of homies around, yeah. um, see if there are any more that they can find in, uh, in Bavaria. That's cool, yeah. man. It's quite fun just to think that, um, yeah, Bavaria in Germany is a uh, subtropical. <clears throat> it's a, it's a, it's a Jurassic shark hot spot. <laughs> is that Jurassic? Is that the right time frame? <coughs> I never get the my dinosaur knowledge and my time frame is a bit off. Uh, hang on, 150 million is that Jurassic? years is that... ago. I'm sure when my little one uh, grows up, that will all come back to me. That that was. That was the Cretaceous period, Sean. Okay. Psh. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the Jurassic period was 201 to 145 million years ago. Okay. So you were just, just shy. Not too shabby. Yeah, Not yeah too you're shabby. only five million years yeah? out. out. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? That's nothing, mate. <laughs> that is literally nothing. <laughs> It's just a, a blink of the eye. Exactly. Um, anyway, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Because there's the thing, well, oh, where is it? Is that Cleopatra lived closer to the T-Rex than T-Rex to Stegosaurus or something. Oh, wow. Um, that's just that that huge time frame scale. And, um, oh, yeah, it, it's just bonkers how... Um, how Time works basically. It is. Um, time, time has been going a lot longer than you kind of perceive it, and um, yeah, oh, there's some there's something about Cleopatra, the um, uh, what you call it, the pyramids and mammoths. Apparently, um, yeah, because because the great mammoths they were still being used to to help build the pyramids. Um, but then there was so long since the pyramids were built to when Cleopatra was around that, um, yeah, actually she lives close to us than great mammoths. Also, I can't remember what it was. Cool. One of those. That's great. That That's the best way to end the show. Well done. <laughs> with, with a whole load of just, I don't know, it's kind of a fact that I half remember, but really, <laughs> really don't. Uh, it has nothing to do with scuba diving, but that's what people come here for. Just semi-conscious facts that are vaguely about something that I remembered from a TV program a year ago. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> anyway, that's, those are all the, uh, the news stories that we have for you today and all the just kind of half facts that I can remember. Um, if you do have anything interesting that you want to mention or correct me uh, down below, let us know in the uh, in the comments. If you have any questions, then by all means, uh, pop them down in the uh, in the questions below or in the comments below, uh, because this is probably gonna be your last chance to get in for this week's uh, Friday q and I answer all of your, uh, I, I answer all of your interesting questions on, uh, on the Friday Q&A. Uh -huh. So if you have anything interesting, um, I don't know if Sean's gonna be here with me or are you filming by yourself? No, 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 it's all just, uh, it's back to normal now. Set's pre-built. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, because obviously I'm doing some work on a sister, for a sister company at the moment, uh, or, or planning to, but yeah, that's all still in the planning mode. So yeah, no, I should, you'll, you'll get me on the okay. Q&A. I'll be the host, you lucky chap. Cool. So if you have any questions uh, about snowboarding or downhill mountain biking, <laughs> uh, even uphill mountain biking. Um, <laughs> buy an e-bike, there you uh, go, that's anything. my, if, if you're cycling up a hill, just buy an e-bike. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good for the environment, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> Bikes in general are I really did see bad. Someone... They're, wor they're worse than cars for the environment. Yeah, I did see someone, I think he was in Germany, could be wrong, and he had a electric smart car, and then he bolted a diesel generator onto the roof <laughs> to power it. And you're like, 
that's not how this works. No. Obviously, he was doing it as a joke to um, to draw attention to where do you think the electricity is coming from? Yeah. But um, it was it was quite funny. No. Uh, but yeah, yeah, any questions, let us know down in the comments below. Um, if you could use the uh, the hashtag AskMark, mm. uh, that would make our life a little bit easier to be able to find said questions. Don't forget to head over to simplyscuba.com, uh, sign up to our mailing list, uh, because there'll be a, um, a special discount code coming out in the next few days. Um, so that's gonna be quite interesting and definitely worth signing up for. Uh, that's about it. You can listen to us as a, a podcast as well, if you don't wanna be sort of sat in front of your, uh, your phone or your tablet or your computer if you still watch it on YouTube on your computer. Uh, you can also listen to us on your phone on the go. Um, there won't be any visuals, but you don't really need to see too much on uh, on Daily Deco. It's primarily audio. Um, so wherever you listen to your podcast, you can check us out there. Um, what else do we want to plug? Don't forget to head out to, uh, to teesprings.com. Uh, we still have some amazing Teespring designs, uh, everything from t-shirts, hoodies, uh, scuba diving mugs, all sorts of stuff. They're not mugs that you can take scuba diving, uh, but you can take them uh, sort of just to work wherever you want. Yeah, well, um, while but, Teesprings exists at the moment. I know, I don't think Teesprings as a concept is gonna disappear. No, uh, I do think not. some of their sellers who sell rather anti-Semitic T-shirts mm. uh, might be disappearing um, for obvious reasons, but... Um, but no, obviously we're, we're still uh, sort of running with Teesprings for the time being, um, because, yeah, they, they make good T-shirts for us. They do. Um, yes. Um, anything else you wanna plug? Um, I'm gonna suggest something. So obviously we use, we're asking people to use the hashtag AskMark. Should we? I'll do yeah, a poll. Yeah. So I'll do a poll in the, uh, when this video goes live, there'll be a poll in our community tab. Should we rename Question Time? Because it was just a very, very generic thing we I threw together. Um, shall we rename yeah. it to AskMark? That should be the show. Would you guys, let, let us know. Let the poll over there, go vote. <laughs> should we change Question Time to AskMark? Hashtag. All right. Ask Mark. And then maybe if I talk, I'll put brackets and Sean, close brackets. <laughs> <laughs> the longest hashtag is going to be hashtag Ask Mark, comma, and, and Sean's here too. Yeah. Close parentheses. No, no, no. <laughs> there has to be a couple of dot, dot, dots as well. <laughs> I'm going to add those in. And Sean. <coughs> yeah. That'd be, that's, that hashtag's going to go viral. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. I was thinking, gonna be, yeah. Going to be trending on Twitter and no one's going to understand why. It was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll on? ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought, ask Mark. <coughs> Maybe we'll rename it. Because if you haven't noticed, it's kind of dropped from Daily Deco to its own little thing at the moment. Because normally, uh, I think I, I, I said about this on yesterday's show when it was just myself, we don't normally get many questions or we never used to. Q&A was a bit, bit of a tough one to crack. But... Um, ever since we've come back it seems to have worked really really well so hence why yeah because yeah, normally we do questions. q and a's if like, other than scuba tube where it used to be attached to something else but pure q and a's literally there would be about three or four episodes and that would be it um whereas in yeah, yeah. this one's just carried carried on i think we're on i think we're going to film number nine tomorrow which is pretty good i know nine, it's ten. nine ten i don't even know but yeah that's yeah doesn't sound much but in 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 the spear of the of the or, or the the environment of Q and A, that's actually quite a lot for us. It's going really well. Yeah. yeah. So yes, as the uh, the old adage goes, there are no stupid questions, um, but there are some questions that I just can't be bothered to answer. Um, but yeah, <laughs> anything that uh, that you want to ask, uh, so let us know down in the uh, in the comment. Oh, hiccups uh, in the comments below because I'm sure there's a question that um, there's there's always a question that uh, I mean I've been diving for like over ten years now and there's always a new question where someone says oh uh, what what what's this and you're like no one has ever ever asked me that before and I honestly don't know but let's work it out <laughs> um, it is interesting. Uh, and I do enjoy your questions. Um, it's one of the highlights of my week, asking or oh, answering your questions. Uh, so let us know down in the comments below. Just uh, do sort of hashtag A S K M A R K, and um, yeah, well, uh, I'll get to it on our Friday show. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, I know we sort of dragged on for about ten minutes uh, because That's... we enjoy dragging these out. It's the, um, it's the norm. Thank you for dude. watching. <laughs> and of course, safe diving. Stay classy, scuba divers.